All right, I want to thank uh, Alan Spicer for his suggestion that the video should be made in landscape form rather than in the, uh, what's that called, the, the portrait form. That was his suggestion, and so I'm taking it. Folks could let me know what they think about that, whether they think it's better in the landscape form or in the portrait form. I'll be honest, I think it's better for me to uh, take pictures of the road rather than of me, of uh, the selfies, because nobody really wants to see my face, but I'm driving in this beautiful, uh, beautiful area, and you can get to see the Niflis of Bari, the beauties of nature. Uh, so maybe folks could let me know what they think about that as well. I see things look kind of shaky on the camera. I don't know if that's what's causing that exactly. So anyway, I uh, want to talk about a little idea that I met and discussed today at work. We have Jewish services uh, in the hospital where I'm a chaplain. And I'll say, we, you know, we'll do a little bit of davening, you know, read some in English, some in Hebrew, you know. And... Uh, and then we'll have uh, a, a little sermon. Depends on you know how much time we have. And it might be a discussion. There's all different types of things that we do. And I just gave a little idea, very simple idea. Most people probably, if you're a Ventura or Stickle, you heard of it already. But I think it's still kedai to, to mention it again. If, and maybe some folks watching this video never heard this idea. So I'll, I'll explain it the best I can in a simple and, and easy way to understand. We all know, probably saw the movie The Ten Commandments or The Prince of Egypt or one of these movies, and we know about the Ten Plagues, you know, and that's something we're going to read about in this week's Torah portion. You'll probably hear about it in the... In, Passover Seder, you know, if you're a little bit more religious, you know. So, seven of the ten plagues are this week's Parsha. So the first plague we know is the, the Dom, Blit, is blood, and then the, the second plague is the Sfardeya, uh, fresh, uh, and frogs. Yes? I can't hear you. Can you talk louder? You made pictures of the Makos. Very nice. So, but you know the story with the with Svardaya, with the frog, with the fresh? Because all throughout the Parsha, it says Sefar the Im. It says there's frogs in the plural. But then when the plague actually begins, and how we call the, the plague, it's not Sephar Da'im, it's not frogs in the plural, but Sephar Da'ah. It's not Mayan, it's then Sephar Da'ah, really. Um, Sephar Da'ya is the frog, and it would seem that that's in the singular. There are many different explanations why it's what Ta'al had Sephar Da'ah, that the, the frog in the singular arose simple explanations that we know how in English certain words can be singular or plural you know and there are and the, we don't modify it when it's singular or plural particularly certain animals deer and fish you don't say deer say deer and, you, and fish when you're speaking of multiple of the same type of fish we just simply say fish we do say fishes when we're talking about different species of fish. Then sometimes we, we will say fishes, and other times we'll say fish. Even so. So deer and fish, it's the same word, singular or plural. Sheep. You don't say sheeps, you say sheep. So then the question is, so... Yeah. So in the Chimish, it, it says Svardaya, the Talat Svardaya. It says the frog came up 
doesn't say, but elsewhere it does say Tzavar Da'im. So it's a question on that because in, in Hebrew we do have a plural for frogs. It's Tzavar Da'im. And so why would we say Tzavar Da'ya, Vatala Tzavar Da'ya, instead of Hatzavar Da'im? And the answer that the Medrash brings, of course the Medrash is not necessarily literally true, but it's there to teach us a very deep lesson. Although it could be literally true as well. We don't really know and it doesn't really matter because the lesson is such a good lesson. So the, the way the Medrash teaches is that only one frog came up and that's why it's in the singular. It was a big frog and the Egyptians figured this is going to be easy for us to attack. Right? We know... Uh, What's that fellow's name? The comedian who passed away. Uh, Mitch Hepburn, right? He said, you know, you're not really scared of a frog. You see a frog? All right. So you say, you know, no one's like, oh, no, a frog is here. It's like, oh, here's a frog. Maybe I will come and come closer to me. I'll put you in a jar, put some holes in the jar, and put a rock and a stick in there to simulate your environment, you know. So... They figure one frog, what's the big deal? They took a stick and they hit the frog. And we know the Medrash says that it's split in two. So then they got frustrated and they hit them again. So then each, the two split in two, we had four. And then those four, you, you hit all four of those split in two. So you had eight, 16, 32. Before you knew it, you had millions of frogs all over Egypt. The question is, after they saw they saw about 20 frogs, why didn't they stop already? Why didn't they just say, all right, good night, Sean. We'll, we'll leave these uh, 20 frogs. And uh, and that's it. But they no, they kept hitting the frogs. They didn't learn the lesson. And that's one of the big failures of humanity. Is we get frustrated and we don't realize... Here, the Egyptians, they brought the plague upon themselves. They didn't have to keep hitting the frogs, and then they wouldn't be bothered by the frogs. But they got so frustrated, and they got so angry, and they kept hitting the frogs, and then what happened? They just, they lost control. And so they brought the plague upon themselves. Which really all the plagues were, they brought upon themselves. They had to clean up all the frogs and all these things. It was a big, big, difficult task. And the, what we see from this is don't get frustrated because you're just going to make your problems bigger. And it's hard. And all of us, we all struggle with this. Every human being, to a certain extent, struggles with frustrations and anger. And we got to learn a lesson from these frogs not to do that. There are many other lessons we can learn from the frogs and from all the plagues. But uh, for now, that's good enough because I know the algorithms say that's better. You finish, if someone watches the whole video, it's better. So maybe if I make a shorter video, people watch the whole thing. So don't, so learn the lesson from the frogs. Don't get frustrated. And please like, share, and subscribe, comment. What do you think about these frogs? Uh, and put in the comments below what what lessons we can learn from this. Because that also helps the algorithm. All right. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe.